right so the next table which we are going to learn are the des next discovery that is a modern periodic table so modern periodic table is behind me this was basically discovered in uh, or it was discovered by henry mosley right so uh, the tenure between 1887 to 1915 uh, so 1917 i think 1887 to 1917 was the tenure right so the modern periodic table which was given by henry mosley after mendeleev's table so we've already seen mendeleev's table in the last uh, video now so whenever you're learning about a table remember important thing as i said first mention the year after mentioning the year you need to mention about the discoverer that is henry mostly after that you need to give the definition of what he has said so same like mendeley but a slight difference that made the whole concept very clear to us what did Mendeleev say? He said, the properties of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic masses or atomic weight, he said. But when it comes to Henry's modern periodic table, he said, the properties of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic numbers. This is where is the difference. So, whenever you are speaking about Mosley's periodic table, use the word atomic number. Once again, the properties of the elements, yes, are the periodic properties of the atomic numbers. So, the properties of the elements are nothing but atom physical properties as well as chemical properties so what is it observe these properties they occur at regular intervals so we will redefine it so whenever elements are arranged in the increasing atomic numbers what happens the properties like physical properties and chemical properties so those elements which have similar physical properties as well as similar chemical properties they fall under one particular sort they fall under those only so all these have similar physical and chemical properties these of similar and physical properties like that the periodicity is up observed the recurrence of this property done so i've given the definition now what was his observation what did he discover so in the modern periodic table when i've seen i've got this chart very wonderful chart it is very important for you in organic chemistry done so according to modern periodic table there are two important which you should remember <laughs> what are they now my work is arranging according to atomic numbers it has two important concepts most of the students they get confused two important words you should remember remember now see here this is called vertical this is vertical this is called vertical now this is horizontal this is horizontal 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 remember so he has divided or the periodic table contains two important things vertical columns these are called columns it is all vertical columns horizontal rows understand that so how many vertical columns are there vertical columns are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 18 vertical columns we have point number one. Second point we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 horizontal rows once again 18 vertical columns and 7 horizontal rows now what are these called 18 vertical columns are called groups 7 horizontal rows are called periods remember that that's the second point understood students 18 vertical columns are called groups 7 horizontal rows are called periods Correct? yes so uh, we have, next important thing what did he discover he said he has placed elements according to their atomic numbers and periodicity in properties yes so the modern periodic table contains just see this is your first set these are called s block elements because the incoming electron enters in the s orbital after that there is one more set to my right hand extreme these are called p block elements the incoming electron or the valence electron enters into p orbital next set is these elements these are called transition elements transition elements where the inner electron it is also called as d block the electron enters with the d block elements next these are called inner transition elements where the incoming electron enters into f block element once again s block elements p block elements d block elements and f block elements done here it enters valence electron into s uh, orbital here p orbital here d and this is f done so once he is divided now i've divided into horizontal uh, what uh, this in horizontal rows are over vertical columns are over divided division into s p and d and f are over so s block these are called alkali metals first row this particular thing is called alkali metals these are called alkaline earth metals next this is the p block where i'll be dealing one after the other group where what is 
called alk uh, chal cousins what oxygen family everything i'll be dealing one after the other just understand so s block contains alkali and alkaline earth metals p block contain groups and transition elements as well as inner transition elements that now when i have to speak about the s block elements remember whenever i speak about this the properties of all these are similar the properties of all these are similar like that this is also similar in the modern periodic table after dividing after learning the horizontal rows as well as vertical horizontal rows and vertical columns after dividing into s p d and f block elements next important concept which you should remember is something called a concept called metalloids see here the purple colored elements what is this important these metalloids are those just see here not this particular thing see here not this purple i'm sorry here boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony tellurium polonium all these elements are called metalloids what are these they are the elements which have both means they contain or they are going to show both the properties of the metals as well as non metals now what are metals here we will discuss the next point so metalloids are placed in the p block elements next important thing to the left extreme of the periodic table just see the first two groups are all completely metals on my right extreme here all these elements are non metals fine metals are always electro positive in nature that means they tend to donate means they uh, uh, the ability to what do you say donate electrons but when it comes to electro negative non metals are always electro negative in nature they try to drag the electrons means they try to pull the electrons from metals that's a combination metal as well as non metal combined together for example na and cl together forms nacl which is the common salt which we take isn't it so once again the periodic table metals are always electro positive ability to donate donate electrons non metals are electro negative ability to drag or pull the electron pair next comes the uh, transition elements so the transition elements are a combination of different types of metals most precious metals are here just see here silver is here your gold is here yes okay silver here yes silver sorry silver here gold here platinum here all these are precious metals which have lustrous in nature next comes important metals which we use it in daily life just like your copper we use aluminium okay aluminium is here to the extreme this one okay zinc here important metal copper here nickel wires iron which we use chromium which we use cop co this is cobalt which we use chromium is here cobalt is here everything manganese all these metals which Which we we using in daily life are there in the transition table in this one. Next after transition table, next comes a C a set called F block elements, which contains two series. What is this? This is called lanthanide series, and this is actinide series. Where is it starting? Your lanthanide series is starting from lanthanum, fifty seventh element. Next comes cerium, praseodium, neodymium, promethium, samarium, like that. This lanthanide series starts from lanthanum, and it ends. set lithium that is called f block element lanthanides in the same way lanthanides the next series is called actinide series actinide series starts from actinium look here this is purple color following with this and actinide series starts from actinium and it ends at laurentium so there are two things s block element and i should not say two things it's s block elements p block elements d block elements f block elements again having lanthanides and actinides so lanthanide starts from lanthanum to lutetium actinide starts from actinium to laurentium so this is a complete periodic table so in this periodic table there are lot of things to study so many reasoning questions i'll be showing you how is atomic size increasing decreasing so the criteria which i'll be following so this periodic chart whenever you're learning some your inorganic chemistry what is the criteria you need to st study about the electronegativity how is it increasing in a period how is it increasing decreasing and increasing group i will study in a group i'll be studying in a period i will also dealing with the ionization enthalpy concept i'll be studying teaching you about reduction i'll be teaching you about oxidation 
I'll be teaching you about atomic radius. I'll be teaching about electron affinity as well as metallic and non-metallic property. So in that atomic radius, I'll be teaching about ionic radius, covalent radius. All will be dealt in the form of reasoning questions from JD Lee. So your modern periodic table students. So understand one important thing. Whenever you're writing about a table, write the age which it was discovered. Write who has discovered it. Write the definition. Write the uh, assumption. And important thing is you should also end up writing the limitations. So if I have to speak about limitations, first and most important, a hydrogen position. Because hydrogen resembles group 1 as well as it also resembles the 17th group, halogens. He could not explain that limitation. So remember that is the most most important limitation of Mendeley's periodic table. Not much, very few limitations only. Right. The next limitation which we have to remember is, as we have seen in Medley's also, the position of isotopes were not given. So this position was a bit not clarified because this also has one electron, this also uh, is means one minus one. So hydrogen either should be positioned here because this matches this particular column as well as this particular column. That was a confusion. Next important limitation was the position of isotopes. What isotope having same atomic number but different mass number? He could not explain or give a position for isotopes anywhere because elements have say like chlorine chlorine has two isotopes 35.5 as well as 37 isn't it so hydrogen has three isotopes one two and three so that position was not given under the third limitation he could not explain us like because lanthanides if i have to see it becomes very long if i take this column and this column here and place it it becomes very long so lanthanide and actinides were given a different position here below the periodic table that was a slight limitation otherwise it should be after 57, it should be 58, 59, then all these 71. After that, it should be 72. So, that was not clearly explained by Mendeley. But as of this particular thing, when we start using it, as in when we apply different, different concepts, all will be clear for us. So, thank you for watching, students. This is your modern periodic table along with the definition, along with the uh, assumptions as well as limitations.